So what we saw in the brain scan studies of orgasmic meditation really paralleled what goes on in many other rituals, but is showing how it kind of connects that sexual piece to the spiritual piece as well, that sense of connectedness and that sense of identification that is so fundamental to all the rituals that make up the, the religious and spiritual rituals of human beings. What is important, though, for I think everyone to realize, and we see this again, in, we talk, I talk about this in the book about not just the rituals, but the mythic elements, the storylines that go behind the, the, the rituals themselves. And so part of that has to do with not just the, the connection one on one with somebody, but how that then gets extrapolated to a larger connection with society, with our community, with the society, with a country, with the world, all of humanity, the universe. And so I, I think part of what we can see is that uh, when it comes to a practice like orgasmic meditation, or again, many other rituals that help people to feel that sense of connection and connection to something greater than the self, uh, it really can help people with that feeling of isolation. And I think what's important about that is that, that you know, a practice, you know, could be just between you know, it could be just a single individual, or in the case of orgasmic meditation, could be between two people who can, you know, quote unquote, be isolated in the sense that they're just doing it themselves. But the the embodied story, the embodied mythic elements of it can be connecting us to a much greater um, society and a much greater, you know, something that is greater than the self. So I think through those kinds of processes, we can see whether or not these practices can lead to uh, a greater sense of inclusivity, a greater sense of, of empathy and compassion for all people. And in fact, I mean, in many ways, that to me has been one of the big take-home messages of a lot of the research which I have done, which is that as people come in to, to uh, have me do brain scans of these different practices, um, you know, are we able to see uh, or what, I, what I'm able to see is that the genuineness with which people come in, and it, it's given me a tremendous appreciation for how powerful these practices are for people and, and how they really can, uh, can, can make those people feel connected to something greater than the self. And so I think uh, you know, all of these practices have been shown over the, the years to have beneficial effects in terms of the brain, uh, in terms of reducing anxiety, in terms of reducing stress, in terms of increasing our sense of social connectivity, feelings of empathy, and so forth. So all these different elements become a, a very critical part of these practices. And part of what we also were able to observe specifically in the orgasmic meditation practice, but also with some of the other practices that we've looked at, is that the, the, the effects seem to occur not only during the practice, but actually seem to change the brain over time. And in actually one of the most recent articles that we are now getting published, um, what we showed was that the people who had done the orgasmic meditation over time had differences in their brain compared to people who were non-meditators. And so when we look at that kind of a change, and those occurred in areas that are involved in social connectivity, um, and some of these areas that have some weird names like precuneus and insula, uh, what they do is they help us with social interactions. They help us to perceive what other people are thinking about and feeling about. Uh, and these were areas of the brain that were just fundamentally different in people, not while they were meditating, but this was based on the resting scans that we did of the people who were involved in our practice. So that also speaks to the idea of uh, how these kinds of practices and orgasmic meditation in particular uh, is able to change a person over time and, and hopefully help people to, to manage that kind of social isolation uh, in a more effective way. And, and I think that, you know, hopefully future studies will be able to, to show how different kinds of practices um, can be effective like that. Uh, and and as, as someone in the world of integrative medicine, you know, there's never a one size fits all, but uh, when somebody can find a practice that works best for them, it can have a very powerful effect. And, and we are starting to see that and show that through the imaging studies that we have.